All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, panelists or APPC members for joining on. I would now like to welcome everyone to the February 22nd meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee. Pursuant to Government Code Section 54953E and the recommendation of the Health Officer of the County of Sonoma, Art and Public Places Committee members will be participating in this special meeting via Zoom webinar. Uh, recording Secretary, will you please review how the public may comment and participate in today's meeting? Yes, the committee appreciates the public's participation. For those members of the public who have submitted written comment, those comments have been attached to the agenda, reviewed by the committee, and are accessible to the public. Members of the public are allowed one comment per item, which includes written comments. A single email constitutes a comment on an item, so additional emails cannot be added. Members of the public wishing to speak during item 4.1 or item 3, the general public comment, um, will be able to do so by utilizing the raised hand feature, or if by calling in, pressing nine on their phone. They will then be given the ability to address the committee. Thank you. Great, thank you, Eileen. At this time, I'd like to take roll call. Wonderful. Chair Kiefer? Present. Vice Chair Jones Carter? Present. Member Baumgartner? Present. Wonderful. Member Nathanson? Present. Member Sayers? Here. Member Asterian? Present. Member Fuentes? Present. Let the record reflect that all members are present. Great, thank you. Item number three, public comments. This is the time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, but are which, but which are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when the item is called. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Eileen, do we have any general public comments at this time? We have no general public comment at this time. Chair Kiefer, before we move on, I wanted to just take this opportunity to recognize our new member, Bob Sayers. Uh, this is his first meeting. He was appointed by Council Member Alvarez. Um, welcome, Member Sayers. And I know you know one out introducing you, but I just wanted to give you the opportunity to say hello and to say a few words about yourself. Oh, well, I'm just very pleased to be a part of this. I'm, uh, I've been a long time uh, collector of art and stuff forever. So I'm, you know, thrilled to be a part of it and be able to make some sort of contribution, whatever that might be. Thank you. Sorry, Chair Keeper, please proceed. Thanks and nice to meet you, Mr. Uh, Bob Sayers. Great to have you on our committee. Thank you. All right, at this point, we'll move on to, I, to number four scheduled items. First up, we have 4.1, Unum Sculpture Recommended Words and Languages. Staff will present the recommended words and languages for the, court, for the sculpture Unum by Blessing Hancock, Hancock, approved for installation in Old Courthouse Square. The presentation will include the project background and collaborative process used to collect the submissions from the community, as well as languages identified through a data-driven approach. This time I'll hand it over to Tara Thompson for presentation. Thank you, um, Kristen and all members of the committee and welcome to all members of the community who are on this call. Um, thank you for participating. Uh, I am here today to present um, the second time we are presented with this item, um, but I'll go through the full presentation as I did at the January meeting and additionally give some background um, about the procedural situation we have found ourselves in and the revisions that we have made um, to the recommendation. So we are here today to talk about the recommended words and languages for the Unum Sculpture by Blessing Hancock. Next slide, please. So a little bit of project development and background. Um, this project really was initiated back in August, 2019. 
uh, with the formation of a community advisory committee. The committee developed the project plan, which was approved by the Art and Public Places Committee and outlines the description, goals, site considerations, selection process and criteria, budget, stakeholders, and timeline for the project. Later on in November 2019 through 2020, community engagement um, really ramped up and the selection panel for the project was convened. An initial community survey seeking input on the development of the project resulted in um, a little over 250 responses. And, in the, and the information from that survey was shared with the slate of finalist artists. A selection panel was formed to review submissions and recommend a final artist to the Art and Public Places Committee. The panel's recommendation considered 700 plus responses from a second community survey requesting input. In December 2020, the Art and Public Places Committee approved Blessing Hancock's Unum as recommended by the selection panel using the criteria laid out by the advisory committee. Next slide, please. This is the piece, the artist renderings of Unum by Blessing Hancock showing it during daylight as well as uh, in uh, nighttime with the um, LEDs illuminating from the inside of the sculpture. Also shows its approximate placement in Courthouse Square along the north side near 4th Street. Next slide, please. This is the description that Blessing provided in her proposal about Unum, um, which is Latin for oneness or together. It is a signature artwork that places emphasis on innovation, diversity, and engagement as leading values of Santa Rosa. The community engagement focus was of utmost importance uh, for this project during the selection process. And the text on the sculpture uh, was proposed to be collected and did did happen um, through a community engagement process that identified the selected words, um, hoping to represent inherent values in, to Santa Rosans. The dimensions are approximately 12 feet high by 15 feet in, uh, across, and the materials are water, jet cut stainless steel with LED lights. Next slide, please. This slide talks about the engagement process used to collect the words and identify languages. Um, a community advisory group uh, was made up of a variety of community organizations. Um, this started in the summer of 2021 and lasted through the fall. Uh, a community outreach plan was developed by the artist team and the community advisory group the focus was to design the community outreach portion of the project focused on the words and languages for the sculpture. The group helped design how we approach the community with this opportunity, how best to facilitate a process to invite people to participate. And once responses were gathered to review and recommend these results to the Art and Public Places Committee. This group considered the languages and the words sorry, excuse me, this group considered the languages the words would be translated into and landed on the most common languages currently spoken at home in Santa Rosa. The community advisory group also made the following recommendations to include a land acknowledgement on site to accompany the artwork and to include Pomo and Miwok languages to acknowledge the land on which the artwork will stand. Next slide, please. The engagement prompts um, are shown here. These are the questions that were put to the community to solicit the words that were then used um, for the, the list that is being recommended today. Um, drawing from the original project goals of providing the community with an artistic symbol that reflects the Santa Rosa values of innovation and cultural inclusivity, and that is forward thinking and expresses the innovation and diversity and engagement of the community. Um, these, these were the prompts that were, were selected by the group. What are your hopes for the future of Santa Rosa? What about your community neighborhood inspires you? What makes Santa Rosa unique? What values are important to you and your community? 
what makes Santa Rosa a special place, what will Santa Rosa look like in the future, what are you grateful for, and what is your favorite thing to do in your neighborhood. Some of these were used for the general population outreach and some were specific um, for youth on a flyer that we distributed to summer camps. Approximately 400 total responses were collected and um, the artist team did targeted outreach to community stakeholder groups, as well as, um, like I mentioned, the youth outreach to summer camps and we have the online survey as well. Next slide, please. This was the original community advisory committee recommendation that was made to the Art and Public Places Committee on Jan at the January 10th special meeting. On the left are shown the top 18 words that appeared in the results that we got from the engagement with the community. And on the right are the top 15 languages spoken in San Rosa as identified in the City of San Rosa's Language Assistance Plan, as well as the two additions recommended by the Community Advisory Group. Miwok and Pomo. Next slide, please. That brings us to um, Janu the January 10th special meeting. Um, this meeting was called to review the words and languages resulting from the engagement process and recommended by the community advisory group. Public comment was received prior, during, and after the meeting on the topic of the selected languages. Requests were received to add additional languages, including Hebrew, Japanese, Russian, and Greek. Next slide, please. By a three to one split vote, where four members were present and two were absent, at the time we had a six member committee, um, the APPC approved the recommended list of 18 words and languages. Um, at the request by the absent members of, of that, at that meeting to understand how to review or appeal the decision made by members who were present at the vote, staff consulted with the city clerk and the city attorney. And re upon review of the parliamentary procedures, it was discovered that the process for action on the words and languages was incorrect, causing the vote to be invalid. As the original motion for this item was invalid, there is now an opportunity to provide a modified recommendation. In order for a motion to pass, a majority of the full committee, not just those present at the meeting or of those seated, um, six members were seated at the time, even though the committee is seven. So for the APPC, that means that four affirmative votes of a seven member committee are required to pass a motion. Um, next slide, please. So this is the revised recommendation. The goal is to respect the process established by the Community Advisory Committee, Selection Panel, and Art and Public Places Committee while seeking a means for greater inclusivity. It is recommended to expand the list from the original 15 languages that were identified to the top 30 languages spoken in Santa Rosa based on US Census Bureau data and identified in the city's 2019 language assistance plan. The recommendation includes the original selection of words as previously presented. Next slide, please. Here are those words again. And again, no change from the original recommendation. These were the top responses to those prompts in the survey and the other engagement that we did through the flyers at camps and to other groups. Next slide, please. These are the recommended languages that have been expanded from the original recommendation. The list of languages seen here is an expanded list of the most common languages spoken in Santa Rosa as included in the city's language assistance plan and from the US Census Bureau. In green are the original 15 languages identified by the language assistance plan and recommended on January 10th. In blue are the indigenous languages recommended by the advisory group. In yellow are the next most common languages spoken at home based on the US Census Bureau data. As previously mentioned, the community advisory group recommended including the Pomo and Miwok languages to acknowledge and respect the land on which the sculpture will sit. 
These recommended languages were identified through a data-driven process to be as equitable as possible and represent Santa Rosa's residents. Based on input from the community, the sculpture is intended to be forward-looking, aspirational, and represent the future of our community. Hence the recommendation to use the most common languages spoken in Santa Rosa as identified through this data. In addition, there was an emphasis on words and languages. Neither culture nor religion were considered in the conversation about this representation, except for the recognition and acknowledgement of the indigenous land. The artist has shared that approximately a thousand words can fit onto the sculpture. The recommendation we are presenting here today is to use the words translated into each language listed for a total of about 576 words, and then to repeat them as many times as will fit on the sculpture. Next slide, please. So that brings us to the recommended action for today to approve the recommended words and languages to be included in UNAM's design for the Imagine Art in Old Court Courthouse Square Public Art Project. And again, four affirmative votes are needed to pass. Next slide, please. Oh, <laughs> there was one more slide. That's okay, we can get to it later. So um, with, oh, okay. Next slide is just next steps. Um, if, if approved today, the artist will use these words in all the languages to finalize the artwork design and the engineering needed and then submit that to the city. The city will work with translation service, services to get all words translated. In fact, we have most of them completed already. After final design and engineering are approved, the artwork will be fabricated. And right now the timeline is still on track to be installed this summer. So that is the conclusion of my presentation. I am happy to answer any questions from the committee members. Thank you. Great, thank you, Tara. A little bit of housekeeping for our committee as we go forward. Uh, next, we'll have committee questions to Tara and city staff. Following that, we will have public comments then there will be a committee discussion uh, and, and we'll go from there. So just wanting to lay out uh, our next steps for this meeting. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Tara or city staff regarding this project? Member Nathanson. Yes, thank you. Um, hi everybody. Um, Jeff Nathanson, a uh, member of this committee and also a uh, director of the Museum of Sonoma County. And um, I am aware of questions and comments that came from the community. And Tara, I was just wondering, were there any um, questions or comments that would be, um, you would be able to share with us that may have come from the community advisory committee or um, any uh, anybody else who was um, directly involved with the uh, process to um, reach out to the community and involved with the uh, selection of the uh, sculpture and, and the words and languages for this project. Thanks, um, Jeff. I'm, I'm just to be clear on what your question is. You in addition to the public comments that have been received and shared with you already, you're asking if I've received any additional questions from the community um, or yes, from the that, advisory group? I guess I'm, I'm making an assumption here that um, somebody who might have been on the selection committee or the community advisory committee may not have um, uh, submitted their comments in the same manner that um, those who um, are in the general public. And so I was just wondering if there was any additional comments or questions okay. that came through um, members of either of those two groups. No, I mean, any, and if they had, I would have shared with them that if they wanted their message or their questions or comments heard by the committee or included in the public record, what the method would be to do so. So um, there's nothing else I have, I have received okay. separately. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Member Baumgartner. Uh, Tara and staff, I wondered um, 
the quest the comment that came in about the um for sight impaired people and try, I don't remember the name of the acronym that goes with the kind of language like braille things like that um was that ever considered before or is that a new thought yeah thank you and um we it was considered in our conversation with the community advisory group well i should say yes it, it was it was considered the discussion at the time was that um, braille we would be interested in including it and are planning to include it on the plaque for the piece um, but uh, in discussions with the artist about including it as one of the um, scripts or uh, parts of the, the written uh, language on the sculpture would be um, problematic and not very practical for the person um, wanting to experience that it would be hard to find um, um, amongst uh, the complete piece. Um, and the fabricator was not sure that they could adequately um, create the experience that would be needed for um, a visually impaired person. As for the other um, uh, request or uh, comment that came through about American Sign Language for the hard of hearing community or deaf community, um, as, as far as that was concerned, our conversation led us to the fact that currently we were not aware of a written version, a written form of American Sign Language that could be used um, on the piece. And so uh, the piece does not need, um, the piece can be experienced without hearing. Um, so we were hoping that there was a, uh, a way that we could represent that part of the community um, in, in the piece itself and, and have it be experienced by, by everyone um, of di differing abilities all alike. So, um, so that was the conversation that was had about those two uh, comments that you may have seen in, in the emails that came in. Thank you. Tara, could you break down for our committee uh, a little bit about how the community advisory committee recommendation came to our came to us uh, back in January. Um, was there a meeting that the words and languages were discussed uh, at, or was this uh, piled together through email? What was the method that the recommendation was put together? Sorry about that. Um, thanks, um, Kristen. The, the, the group was put together in summer, last summer, 2021, um, and met a few times. I'm going to say three, three meetings held on Zoom, but a lot of communication happened through email with sending um, information, drafts of, of things back and forth to get, to get input on. Um, I know Jeff was able to serve for one of those meetings. Um, I'm not sure if he wants to add anything about his experience with that, those conversations, but by the final meeting, there was um, a, a, a consensus that, um, the, um, that the recommendation with the words and languages was ready to be sent onto the committee. And there wasn't any additional additions made by that group at that time and, and the recommendation was finalized. So, um, but it, it was a ongoing process throughout that summer and fall that led us, um, that, that led us there. And the group's purpose was really um, multi-purpose, really to, to talk about how to engage the community to get input on the languages, um, excuse me, on the words, um, and then um, helped with soliciting soliciting that participation, getting the word out to their, to their communities, and then to finalize um, the recommendation to make to APPC. Yeah, and I, I can just add to that, that um, we primarily focused on communication out to the community. Um, but um, unfortunately, um, in the final phase, I was not able to participate in, in a meeting that um, uh, 
reviewed the, the recommendations and, and sent them to staff. But um, I think that the process and the intent was to, uh, com to reach out to the entire community to the best of our ability. And the um, responses seem to be at, at a certain point um, seemingly representative, although I think we, we realize now that um, there were probably um, uh, members of the community who um, learned about the project late in the process or, or too late. Um, anyway, I'm glad we're uh, meeting today to uh, revisit this. And, uh, um, you know, I think uh, there was um, always best intentions to be as inclusive as possible. Thanks for a little bit more info about how the Community Advisory Committee uh, convened and processed this information. Uh, Jeff, do you remember how the City of Santa Rosa language assistance plan uh, list of languages was presented to that committee? Was that via email or a presentation? I, I frankly don't recall at all. Um, I, I mean, I just... I don't remember seeing the list. I don't remember being in a meeting where it was discussed. Um, so I'm sorry. I just, I, I think uh, I, 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 I'm not even sure why I wasn't able to participate, but I don't remember that at all. I can say that the conversation on the group was, um, you know, why not use the most common spoken languages in Santa Rosa to represent the community, the diversity of the community. And so the direction to staff from that group was, is, is there a way we can find that information out? And so then David Ward was our project manager at the time and did research on what the city had already done to identify the most common languages spoken in Santa Rosa. And he um, used the language assistance plan as well as um, found the back, backup data at the US Census Bureau uh, for for the purpose of presenting that back to the group. I'll just add that uh, I think we made a reasonable assumption that the, the languages um, would be a fair representation of, of all of the various uh, cultures and, and backgrounds and people who live and work in Santa Rosa and um, uh, the results were not as inclusive as I think we intended them to be. And so it was um, the, the process as, as um, much as it had integrity also didn't produce, I think what I, I certainly thought in the early meetings when we met as a community advisory group, we fully expected it was going to be a very inclusive representation. And so I think um, when I finally saw the list, um, and unfortunately I couldn't um, be at the, at the last meeting of this committee, but um, <laughs> I was kind of surprised that it was um, a, a smaller list than probably it should have been. And so um, I'll just say that I really appreciate um, the effort on the part of staff uh, Tara and her staff to do additional research and look into it. Um, it seems like the process perhaps um, stopped a little bit short of being complete before it came to the last meeting, but I'm glad that we're here to revisit it. And, um, uh, you know, I would just truly appreciate the, the uh, effort of staff because I think this was a really difficult thing to do. You know, it's like on the surface, it was like, oh, yeah, let's look out and see who lives in Santa Rosa and uh, what languages are spoken. And oh, yeah, there's there's that data that supports that. But it didn't exactly produce the results that perhaps we hoped it would. And um, also, I, I want to applaud the process and the city and the staff for um, having a platform through which the community could could comment. And um, so I think this is an important dialogue. And I think uh, we'll 
we'll get through this process a little bit stronger for our efforts, I hope. Um, I just want to interject that we be careful because, again, Member Nathanson, you were not able to be at all the meetings. So I just want to be careful in um, uh, with this committee and overstating your, um, your uh, take from the meetings you were able to attend compared to what happened at the last meeting. So um, I'm understanding your comments to be those of your perception and not speaking on behalf, uh, formally on behalf of the committee. Uh, based on the last uh, thing, or, or, or um, if you'd like to clarify, if you were able to connect uh, with other members of the of the committee in the um, in terms of what you what what happened at the meetings you you missed. Oh, sure. I'm I'm happy to clarify. Um, this is my own perception. I certainly reviewed the um, uh, the you know the comments and 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 followed. Um, the process um, to the vote on the last um, meeting, but I was not in attendance. And um, so um, this is just my, you know, my own personal perspective on the process. So um, I'm happy to make that clear. Well, thank you for providing more uh, explanation on the process of how this committee was informed by the community uh, advisory committee and the work that went in for the community outreach process as well. At this point, I'd like to move over to public comment. Eileen, can you queue up uh, if we have any public comment at this time? We do. Um, let me go ahead and just share the screen. The first uh, member of the public with their hands raised is uh, Leslie Graves. Um, Leslie, if you could please confirm your ability to see the timer and introduce yourself if you so choose. Thank you. Yes, I can see the timer. And I am Leslie Graves. I am a member of the com community as well as I was a member of the Community Advisory Committee initially, the Selection Committee, and the Community Engagement Committee. I do have to uh, put in parentheses though that I too, due to a health issue, was not able to attend the last meetings of the Community Engagement Committee. Thank you to Chair Kiefer and members of the Art and Public Places Committee for meeting today to continue this important discussion of languages to be included on UNAM. And thank you to staff for your thorough work and bringing this opportunity to include further languages on this important art in Courthouse Square. I take responsibility for not being at those meetings due to a health issue, but I want to make clear that on both the community advisory, excuse me, on the, on the selection committee and the community engagement committee, that it was a stated purpose to have as much diversity and inclusivity in this project and in the final result. So I'm very pleased that this meeting is happening. I also want to thank you for having the acknowledgement that there is now a need to have 30 languages for a more robust and inclusive selection and honoring all of our community, all of the diversity, even those that we may not be aware of, that we may not see, or we may not hear. I'm here simply to say thank you. And I hope that the consideration of the recommendation of by the staff is taken by all of our members and that we come to a conclusion that ideally is unanimous and brings this project to completion with all 30 languages. Thank you so much. Thank you.
We do not currently have any additional hands raised at this time. Did you want to give it a minute? Oh, Kristen, you're muted. Perhaps we can just give a reminder to folks on how they can participate in public comment at this time. Uh, absolutely. Um, so members of the public who are wishing to participate, if you are online, you can uh, utilize the raised hand feature. And if you're calling in, you can press star nine on your phone. We do have an additional member of public who would like to speak. Um, Judy Kennedy, um, if you would please confirm your ability to see the screen. Yes, I can see the screen. Wonderful, thank you. Please proceed. Um, <clears throat> I'm really happy that you have come up with enough uh, languages and wording that, as Leslie Graves said, is all inclusive. And I also, uh, you um, are certainly right in thanking staff and everyone for doing their job. I wanna also acknowledge the Press Democrat um, in this discussion. I have been living in San Rosa for many, many years. I've been an arts advocate and an artist of public art for many, many years. And this is the first time I have seen so much information coming um, from the public. There were eight letters to the editor about this. There was a long um, editorial by the Press Democrat staff, and there were four long articles with pictures describing the process as it went along. And I was thrilled to see how many people um, were engaged through the Press Democrat to come forward with um, language um, options and with historical um, backgrounds that led to the discussions that I'm hearing from you today. So um, I think that art like this that has been controversial is a really good thing and is a really positive for me, at least, to see the public get so involved in one sculpture. It's not, I like it and I don't like it. It's, it's people with really imaginative ideas and interesting takes on the process and the sculpture itself. So um, thank you staff and all of you who were on the several different subcommittees to this committee. And I also wanna thank the Press Democrat for uh, really opening up the opportunities to people that are outside of um, the government and people like me who watch your meetings all the time. So that um, it, I hope that all the, artwork that comes into Santa Rosa gets this kind of um, public acknowledgement and, and interest. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have no additional hands raised at this time. Thank you, Eileen, for coordinating public comment. At this time, I'd like to close public comment and move to discussion within the APPC. Would any members like to present any comments based on the presentation or public comment that we've heard so far? Um, now is an appropriate time to address any public comments that uh, were presented. I, I think we need a motion and then it opens up for, for comments. So we need okay. a motion. Yeah, because it's questions first, then a motion, and then comments. Thank you for reminding me of our process. Uh, I would next like to move to a motion. Would any com committee member like to present a motion for us to discuss? Anne. 
Baumgartner. Uh, I would like to create uh, the new motion that we approve the word list and the expanded list of 30 languages um, that has been presented um, for approval. Thank you, Anne. Do I have a second for this recommendation? Second. Yep. Second. <laughs> Great, thank you. Now we can move to discussion. This time, is there any question or any discussion items? Yes, Lisa. Yes, I just wanna thank um, Leslie and Judy Kennedy for speaking up at the comments. I really appreciate all of um, the work that they have done for the art community and what they wanted, their, their passion and what they do. And um, I definitely appreciate them being here and being a part of this. And that's what we do need. We definitely need a lot more community, um, the community to be involved in these process. Um, and also too, I just, you know, I wanna thank everybody that can, um, who has, you know, currently participated with this project. There was a lot of effort, time and consideration into this project and, and especially for Tara too, who has put in a lot of time and effort into this. Um, unfortunately, and I wanna apologize, I wasn't able to make the last meeting. Um, it was one of the very few meetings I did miss and um, I, but I did watch it right after and everybody's, that video is, there for everybody to watch. And, um, you know, I do support my committee members and I do, but, you know, I did have some concerns on the limited of languages and I felt there was, from my knowledge, quite a few of them were at that time missing. Um, so I'm grateful to be able to have this the second opportunity and to be here. Um, and also too, um, if people were just wondering, you know, I don't, well actually, I don't think anybody else is wondering about Blessing Hancock and the sculpture and stuff, but she was chosen. At, and the reason why I chose her is be, she was one of my top choices is because of her past actions to reaching out to the community and her openness to have the community steer the end result. And again, that was the reason why she was my top choice. And that is definitely, I'm feeling so grateful for the community to be reaching out as they have. And I just wanna say thank you to everyone. Member Jeff Nathanson. Thank you, um, Chair Kiefer and um, Lisa, thank you for your comments. And I also want to echo what Lisa just said. I appreciate the, um, the comments, not only from um, uh, Judy and Leslie, but everybody from the community who has uh, written and commented and the conversations I've had with a few people. I think that the community engagement is a very positive um, step towards the um, finalization of this process. And I also um, was on the selection committee. And one of the things that I really loved about Blessing Hancock's proposal was the, uh, the intent um, to be as inclusive and to really represent this, um, this ideal of togetherness and unity, which in this day and age is just so important. And I feel really proud to be part of this community in um, moving forward on a public art, artwork of this, this uh, type. Um, I'm also aware of some of Blessing's other projects. There's a new project going into Nashville and um, there's a, a wonderful project she did in Palo Alto. And uh, her work uh, is really about bringing people together. And uh, I'm just really pleased to be part of this. It's an honor to have been on the selection committee and also to be on this committee to do a final approval of, of the artwork. So I wanna thank everybody for your thoughtfulness and your participation and also for um, willingness to um, listen and respond to public comment. I think it's all really an important part of the process. Thank you, Jeff. 
Hi, Anne, you had a comment? Oh, you're on mute. Yeah, no, I was unmuting. Um, I just want to affirm that um, I noticed that in some of the editorials and things, there were untrue statements about that people were putting out in the paper that we selected and we did this and we were trying to keep out. And I really feel like we did, we really tried to do the best we could last meeting. We, we did have a disagreement and I still would stand by the way I voted. But what I want to say was the way it was put to us, it was, it was a bit confusing. Um, because we wanted to respect the people that had done the work before us and not knowing that there were many people that maybe didn't make it to the end and all the things we know now. So I just want to affirm that we are a team that hopefully is holding and we're not the vetting and we're not like the rewriting team, but we are the trying to get the whole story team. And so I feel like that happened in this situation. I'm really glad it did. And um, so thanks everyone. I would also like to echo appreciation for our, our nimble staff and ability for our committee to uh, work through some difficult uh, topics and conversations um, with the realization that a lot of these discussions have been taking place over varying uh, media platforms. And that doesn't necessarily always connect the dots in terms of a face-to-face -face connection. And um, I do want to appreciate staff's time for working on this. And I do want to also reflect on um, how excited I was when uh, Blessing Hancock was picked as the artist for this piece. Uh, I have had the opportunity to see several of her pieces and again, really noted their strong ability to um, or just the commanding power, I guess is the right word, to um, have a, a setting of draw that brings people together. And I very much appreciate her artwork in that regard. And I am, I am very excited for this piece to continue uh, and have been very thankful that this process has had opportunity to be nimble and um, reevaluate when there was uh, a, a lack or, or a, a misstep in terms of communication. So thank you for everyone's nimbleness. Oh, Jeff, hi. <laughs> I, I know I just keep having thoughts. <laughs> so bear with me, but I just, you, you touched on something, Kristen, that I think is really important for us all to acknowledge. And that that is that we have gone through this entire process during a pandemic during COVID. And Blessing Hancock is an artist who typically would have come to the community and met with community members in person. And there would have been a very different kind of process about reaching out and engaging the community in the process. And we couldn't really do what we hoped we would do in bringing the artist to the community and getting people together and um, I remember early in the process, I was thinking, oh, it'd be great. We'll have an event at the museum, at the library, at the Finley Center, whatever, you know? It couldn't happen that way. And considering the challenges of working through a process like this during um, a pandemic like we're in, um, I once again, want to just thank everybody and compliment everybody on um, working through this because I believe it was more challenging than we even realized it was to get to a final result. So anyway, just want to acknowledge it's, it's COVID. Things are not normal. I just uh, had a quick question. I thought we were in the discussion framework about the motion to move forward on the recommendations. And I certainly appreciate, but I don't want to take up any more time appreciating everything, uh, that we could move forward with what is the action on right now. Thank you, Member Sayers. Yes, this is the discussion portion of the motion that has been put on the table to approve the recommended languages as they have been expanded to include uh, 15 other languages. 
and approve the uh, recommended words and languages included in UNAM's design for the Imagine Art and Old Courthouse Square Public Art Project. At this time, are there any other uh, discussion items? Seeing none, I would like to move to a vote. Recording secretary, can you please facilitate a vote? Chair Kiefer? Aye. Vice Chair, I'm sorry, Jones Carter? Aye. Thank you. Member Baumgartner? Aye. Member Nathanson? Aye. Member Sayers? Aye. Member Azirian? I'm sorry, Azirian? Aye. Member Puentes? Aye. Thank you. Um, let the record reflect that the motion has passed by unanimous vote. Chair Keith, if I could just take a moment just to give my own gratitude to this committee. I have to say at the last meeting, you guys struggled mightily and really, really tried to help staff come up with something that would be fair and equitable and um, honor the process that, uh, that led to the, the vote. I have to say that uh, we've had conversations with most of you and so many other people from the community and um, the earnestness with which uh, that was brought to this item is something that I think um, members of this, uh, this committee, but as well as staff will bring forward. So we learned many lessons over the past three selection um, selections that have gone to this board, this committee, right? And I have to say, uh, especially with Socorro on um, and the conversations that we've had on this, um, that Art and Public Places Committee is really modeling uh, inclusivity and belonging. And we are uh, entering into um, just a different process uh, in government that is really just so difficult to change uh, when it's been historically systemic for so long. And um, I know we pushed you. I know sometimes it seemed like, you know, we're really questioning things, but it's with this in mind, it's centering that equity um, that is making us better. And I know this was hard. And I wanna thank you on behalf of staff and really on behalf of the city for the hard work you guys put into this, because it was not easy. It's not easy being in the public eye in this way. So thank you on behalf of, of the city and on behalf of, uh, of, of this uh, staff. Thank you, Raisa. <laughs> At this time, there are no further scheduled items. And um, our next item is agenda, sorry. Our next action is adjournment. So thank you everyone. And please stay tuned for the next announcement of the Art and Public Places Committee meeting. Did really we do, do we have to do items, uh, public comment for items not on the... Uh, we did. We did. did. Okay, great. At the beginning. Yeah, thank you everyone. I very much appreciate the time and effort and compassion that you've shown throughout this whole process. So thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.